social media and, and the web plays such a role um, for a lot of families in diagnosis. I mean, the first place I went uh, was the web. And um, I think someone over there was talking about searching for a forum. And that's something that I hope all rare diseases have. And we have a forum called the MPS Forum. And uh, it has families and moms and dads that know more than any doctor knows about MPS. And it's really the first place that most of us go with any strange symptom, any need for types of equipment or social services, or what, what kind of seizure drug should I put my child on. Um, those questions are always asked in a forum like that, uh, at least for an ultra rare disease like ours. So I found the MPS forum, asked lots of questions, and trying to really figure out um, if this was indeed what my son had. And, and we were pretty sure from the very first day that's what he had. I uh, also started a Caring Bridge site, which I think a lot of families use and a lot of other people outside of rare disease use as well. Um, and it's, it's nice with respect to not having to repeat terrible news over and over again. Um, it's nice to update people, but frankly, you don't want to keep telling people over and over your child has this horrible disease and he's going to lose all his skills and you know, this is what happened now, and he's in the PICU, and he's, so, um, you, you know, it's hard enough to write that one time on Carrie Bridge, um, but you really don't want to have to tell people over and over. So that has a good use there. But then that year was the flurry year of all the things going on, so we didn't have a lot of time to really do anything else. Um, but a year later, we had friends who were doing a fundraiser for us uh, for Casey's Medical Expenses. And I'm savvy and wise enough to know that when you're asking people for money, you really need some um, legitimate uh, backup for what that's for. So we started a website uh, called Saving Case. And it, at the time, it just gave information about him and about the disease. It was a static website. Uh, we also started a YouTube channel uh, in order to put some live video and other information out there. When, we, when Case was diagnosed, one of the first things I searched for was live video of children with Hunter's syndrome. And I said, you know, I know what he's like now, but the doctors are telling me this, this is what's going to happen to him. And I want to know what that means. What does it mean for a child at two to start losing, losing cognitive function? Um, how will they seem? And so I searched for live video, and there really was, I came up with really one video. And um, so this was back in 2009. So that was one of my goals, was to put live video out there so people who have newly diagnosed children can say, okay, this is what a child is like. Um, I don't have to feel so horrible. At least I have some tangible view of what that's like. So we started that, and we started with, you know, a Facebook group. You know, Facebook was getting so huge that you had to put everything on Facebook, and some people are only on Facebook. So we started that. Um, so then uh, happened, what happened was what I call kind of the lightning events. I think in any... Um, rare disease um, families, especially with the child, there are these lightning rod events that create action. And the first is always diagnosis or the search for a diagnosis. You're, you're on the internet, everything's a flurry, um, you want to have fundraisers and you want to raise awareness. And so, you know, obviously we started that after uh, things had settled down after he was diagnosed. And actually during that time too, we came up with a, a, an awareness uh, shirt that really just came to me on a drive one day, and that's what I tossed over to you uh, that talks about symptoms of Hunter syndrome. So our second lightning rod event was that case entered a clinical trial in 2010. And um, for, for ultra-rare diseases like MPS, um, a clinical trial or a new drug is a huge event. I mean, it was a flurry since he was diagnosed, and it had been talked about for years. So on you know, forums and in private conversations, this clinical trial was the thing that people were talking about. And so um, he entered the clinical trial in 2010, and I felt like you know, this is such a big event for our community um, to have this trial. I felt an urgency to um, share what was going on because I had um, a friend who uh, was not able to participate or her son was not able to participate and other people wanting to know what was going on. And a friend of mine, the first participant, had blogged about the trial, and that had helped us decide uh, to enter the trial. And so I just felt that that was almost our responsibility to the community to, to 
to share with them our journey. And so um, when I decided to do that, I also felt like I needed to share what brought us to that point. Um, you know, how, if, if I was sharing going forward, you know, how did it feel to come through diagnosis and come all the way to this clinical trial? So, uh, you can see. So, I, at that time, right as we were entering the clinical trial, I started a, a personal blog that just kind of shared my emotional, spiritual journey um, from having children all the way up to that point. And, and I still blog on there as well. And then I uh, revamped Case's website um, to, to really tell the story um, of what was going on. So it's, it's more of a blog. That was a frantic reading of WordPress for Dummies. Uh, I think I can keep the For Dummies people in business because uh, in law school I read HTML for Dummies and started coding websites back then. So WordPress for Dummies, um, right there. So um, I started his website anew with, with blogging about the clinical trial, um, different things that I felt like were not out there uh, about what to do to help our children, different therapies, different products, um, you know, things like uh, MPS has a sensory integration uh, issue, and that's really not in any of the literature. So I just really felt like putting that out there was good for our community. Uh, also, a couple of months later, after we ended the trial, I read some article about how big Twitter was, and I wasn't on Twitter. And said, well, I think I need to be on Twitter. So um, I got a Twitter handle before I even really knew what I was going to do with it, and um, then realized that uh, Twitter is for the leanest and meanest of the crowd. And most of my friends are not on Twitter, but that's fine. Um, but my friends that are on Twitter are the what we call the pushers. They're the leanest and meanest. And, um, and that's great. And I've actually been able to connect with a larger rare disease community. Um, so not just our insular NPS community, but the larger community as well as patient advocates, um, you know, Nord, you can follow lots of different people on Twitter. And I think it performs a lot, um, a much different function than who we're connecting with on Facebook on a personal level. So it really has allowed me to access you know, different pieces of information, different articles uh, that have been great. Um, last fall, then, I started a Pinterest, um, a, sec uh, a group of Pinterest boards, because I was starting to get a lot of questions. So then Case's website was really taking off, and I was getting lots of questions about, well, what products do you use? What, um, what sensory products do you use? What activities is he working on? Um, what are other hunter boys um, that you know? So I started a bunch of Pinterest boards, because I'm a visual person, and if you see Case's website, it's a very visual website. Um, so we have pictures of hunter boys, and we have sensory products, and we have um, uh, activities that he's working on. What apps does he have on his iPad? So uh, that's what we did for Pinterest. And then we uh, actually opened up his Facebook page. It was a private group, and we opened it up to uh, an open Facebook page because we realized, you know, some people are really only on Facebook. You know, they're not going to go to his blog uh, separately, or they're not going to... Um, you know, follow something different. So, so now he has an open Facebook page. 